My name is Tom, and in this video, I am going to show you how to find a missing vector. Okay, so imagine the following scenario. This is a common exercise in physics. You're given a resultant, and you're given some vectors, but you're missing one of them. So, of course, this means you've got to solve an equation. Okay. All right, so this time I will not draw any pictures. We'll take a purely algebraic approach. So let's work this out. And I will use colors to distinguish. Okay. So, say you have a resultant vector, okay, which is 100 newtons along the negative y axis. Okay, so this is our resultant vector, 100 newtons along the negative y-axis. Okay. All right, that's the first step. When three of the forces are known, okay, and they are the following. The first force is 100 newtons at... 60 degrees, okay? So 100 newton, that's 60 degrees. The second force is 200 newtons at 140 degrees. So remember, this is the resultant, this is R. Okay? This is the first force, this is the second, here we are, okay? And now there's a third, and the third one is 250 newtons at 320 degrees. What we need to find is a fourth force, okay? So that means we have to solve the following equation. If we were to write it in vectors, we would have F sub 1 plus F sub 2 plus F sub 3 plus F sub 4. And actually that F sub 4, I will trace over with a different color so as to bring your attention to it this is our variable okay this is the quantity to be found and this is equal to the resultant r so it looks like this and we have to find f sub 4 or the fourth force so that the sum of these forces equals the resultant Well, the only way to solve a vector equation is to solve it component by component, which means we will first have to take the x components, add them together, and then add the y components together. And that will allow us to isolate the x component of the fourth force and the y component of the fourth force. Okay. So that was really said really fast, but let's take a look. <clears throat> let's look at the components of R. What are the components of R? Well. It's 100 newtons along the negative y-axis, which means that the x component of r is 0. And the y component is negative 100. Okay? So we know that that is so because it's negative 100 newtons along the negative x-axis. Okay? I'm sorry. It's 100 newtons along the negative y-axis. Okay? So it's pointing straight down. It's got no x component nothing along the x-axis, okay? So, we have to write the following vector equation. First, we have to find the x component. So we have f1x plus f2x plus f3x plus f4x, and this is one of our unknowns, right? This would be the x component of the fourth force. This is our unknown. 
and the sum of these x components has to be zero. That's one equation. And the second equation states f1y plus f2y plus f3y plus f4y. This equals, all of this equals negative 100. You see? Now this may seem menacing at first, but just keep in mind that all of these quantities can be easily replaced, which means you can find the x component of the fourth force and you can find the y component of the fourth force very easily. Okay. So let's take this equation for the x component and let's rewrite it in a more complete form. So you have 100 newtons at 60 degrees. That means for the x component what you have is 100 times the cosine of the 60. Okay. Plus, for the next force, you have 200 times the cosine here of 140 plus 250 times the cosine of 320 plus, of course, the unknown component in the x direction. So f sub 4x. And all of this is equal to zero. So now each of these is easily evaluated. It's nothing mysterious about those, okay? So use a calculator for this. Right here. There's a TI-30 here that I'll have. So you've got your 100 times the cosine of 60, 200 times the cosine of 140, plus 250 times the cosine of 320, plus the, this one here, which is our unknown, that's our variable, and all of that is equal to zero. So this is a linear equation, okay? It's just a linear equation, nothing else. Anyway, when you perform this operation, you find the following. All of these things, and when you simplify them on a calculator, and I will give you the pleasure of doing that. You can solve for this, f sub 4x, and it's all equal to negative 88.3 newtons. Okay? That's the x component of the fourth force. Well, guess what? The same thing applies to the y component. We just replace the cosine functions with the sine function. So you'd write 100 times the sine of 60 plus 200 times the sine of 140 plus 250 times the sine of 320 plus the unknown y component. All of that equals zero. And as before, each of these is easily evaluated. Despite its menacing appearance, it's just a simple linear equation. Remember, this is a number, and add another number, add another number. It's a simple linear equation. Well, when you simplify this, you find that uh, F4Y okay, equals negative 154.5 newtons. Okay. So we have found the x component of the fourth force and we have found the y component of the fourth force. Which means now we can write here okay, the following. First we have to find its magnitude because we need, you know, these are all given in terms of a magnitude and an angle. Magnitude angle, magnitude angle. We need to find the magnitude of this one. And of course, to do that, we use the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So I will do that on the side. What we have is basically right, the x component squared plus the y component squared. 
So when you plug in here, you find that this comes out to be 180 newtons, okay? So you've got 180 newtons at an angle of And of course, to find the angle, what you use is the inverse tangent function. So maybe you call that angle theta, and that is equal to the tangent inverse of f for y over fx for or f for x, like this. Okay. And anyway, this comes out to be negative 60 degrees. In absolute value, there you go. So I get you got it here at negative 60 degrees. So this is a very detailed and elaborate example. So what is the key to solving a problem of this kind? I know when you first see it, you think to yourself, "Yikes, that looks menacing." Well, the only way to solve a vector equation like this, this is a vector equation, right, is you've got to work the x components individually and you've got to work the y components individually. It's the only way. So this equation that I'm about to highlight, let's say in a blue box, okay, this, is, this describes only the x component. Okay? So the x components of all of the vectors added together have to equal to zero because that's the x component of the resultant. And all of the y components of the vectors added together have to equal to a negative 100 because the resultant has a y component of a negative 100. And that's what this equation states, right? So this is the vector form which is nice, but in practice you always work with components. There's not much that the vector form will tell you. So this is the x component. I'll just write x comp, and this describes the y component. Okay, so this is the process. Can you find the x component, the y component? You apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude, write that in. You apply the inverse tangent function, you find the angle, write that in. And so what we have found by this process is the fourth force is 180 newtons at a negative 60 degrees, meaning 60 degrees below the positive x-axis. And that is the process. Thank you for watching.